Hello Aries and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from April 5th to April 12th. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy in mind. So we are ready to jump in. Uh, but before we do, let's handle that busy work. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you will know when Aries content is uploaded. Aries content is uploaded every single Wednesday. If you're feeling my vibe and would like a personal read, please feel free to check out that description box below. If you're really feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, please click on that link to that Patreon account in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings, depending upon subscription level. Now, on a little astrology before we jump into the tarot, on the 5th, we have Passover beginning at sundown. So, Passover blessings to anybody listening that might celebrate. We have a waxing gibbous moon in Libra with Mercury in Taurus, sextile Saturn in Pisces, with Venus still in Taurus. So, that's a lot of Venus energy. That's mom energy with these particular you know, things all together. Right? Long-term plans are easiest to work on. You're going to feel ambitious while working on goals, and you should. I mean, if you have, so I'm going to give the example of working out. Doctors tell you you need three days a week of exercise to keep your body healthy, right, to keep your heart rate going good and everything, to stay healthy. So that would mean you would need to set those goals that, like, I'm going to work out six days a week, understanding that you are not successfully going to do that every single week. You might do that uh, most weeks. Right? But there's going to be times when you can't maintain that schedule. Life is just going to, ha is going to happen. So if you set your goals far above what your bare minimum that you need is that three days a week, then even when you're not successful, 50% of the time, which every day you've got a 50-50 shot of being successful at this, right? If you were going to work out six days a week, then you're likely going to have three, even if you meet it half the time. So... You will still get what you need out of the situation without wasting any time. And that is the kind of energy you should be working with. Now, on the 6th, we have a full moon happening at 2.34 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 8.43 a.m., the moon will go void, of course. Now, void, of course, moons and full moons kind of carry the same sort of energy. You can't start something new during a void, of course, moon. You can't start something new during full moon energy. This is a day for completing tasks. And you're going to crave stability and peace in all of your relationships so much. You're going to be willing to compromise on things that you weren't willing to compromise on before. So much turbulent energy happening before this. That all of a sudden, peace is going to be the only thing that you can even focus on. No, I can't have this. I can't have this conflict. I can't have it. I can't have it. I got to make it right. Got to make it right. Got to make it right. That kind of thought process. Be careful of the, those racing thoughts. I don't know whose brain that was, but it wasn't mine. On the 7th, we have at 2.29 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, that waxing gibbous moon entering into Scorpio. Well, Venus in Taurus is sextile Neptune in Pisces. So softness will help open up your life now to new approaches solutions and blessings be gentle with yourself and others at this time everything right now in this week it's all really about being gentle what is the best way to interact with somebody brute force doesn't work on you right you're in aries it doesn't work on you it doesn't work on anyone else either so if it doesn't work on you why would you be using that approach on others if you are do not stop it now it's not working, okay? It's okay to take your time and not feel rushed in making a decision, right? Don't feel so rushed that you get snippy because Aries, when they're rushed and they don't like it, they get, you know, rah, rah. I know, I know. There's plenty of other signs that get the same way, but it's usually these signs in, this, in a particular season. Like spring season people do not like to be rushed. Like do not push. We will get there on our own. Thank you. Gently suggest and the movement will happen. On the 8th, when the waning gibbous moon in Scorpio with Mercury in Taurus, sextile Mars in Cancer. 
extra mental energy is going on in this day. Ideas and plans are going to excite people. They're just going to be like, yeah, did you hear about the thing? Can't wait. Let's go do the thing. Right? People are going to be so excited that they're all going to want to talk about the things that make them feel excited. Like, oh my God, did you see that part in that movie? It's so amazing. It's going to be that kind of energy. And that's a beautiful energy to be in. Embrace it. And go running off into the sunset with happiness. On the 9th, it's Easter Sunday. We have a void, of course, moon happening at 5.09 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 8.57 a.m., we're going to have the waning gibbous moon in Sagittarius. So you might feel like you need to go do some exploring. And if you're feeling the need to do that exploring, it's totally normal to feel, you know, like you need to reflect on this day. If you feel like you need to go inward, if you feel like you need to, you know, dive into a subject matter of study, or if you feel like you need to go out into the world and physically explore, you should. Go on. Go do it. Go explore. Come back with that experience and that knowledge, that wisdom. You'll be better off for it. On the 10th. We have the waning gibbous moon in Sagittarius, trine Jupiter in Aries, with expansive Jupiter making fiery Aries and that Sagittarius energy like a hot air balloon. You're going to get the view for 30,000 feet, and you should. If something looks out of place at 30,000 feet, if you're looking at that going, that doesn't get me towards my long-term plans. What's that doing there? It looks funny. It shouldn't really be there. Then it's time to get down back onto that level that next day and be prepared to maneuver that thing into position, into where it's supposed to be. Okay, but you don't have to try to maneuver it from there. Just getting that big picture view on the 10th. On the 11th, on the other hand, you have a void, of course, moon at 6.48 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 1.33 p.m., it's going to enter into Capricorn. But that means most of the day, the energy is going to be that Venus entering into Gemini with trine Pluto in Aquarius with the Sun in Aries conjunct the Jupiter in Aries. So you're going to have a lot of passion running really high, especially you, really high running passion to go, that doesn't belong there. We got to move it. Let's move it. Move it. Move, move. move that energy. Move it. Move that thing out of the way that we saw 30,000 feet. We can't leave it there. It's got to move, right? You're going to have that kind of vibrancy to you. You're going to want better communication. You're going to want to feel like keeping an open mind and an open heart, but also make sure you're keeping in a healthy dose of reality, okay? Communication is going to be key. When that Capricorn moon comes into play in the afternoon there, you're going to want to be focused on your goals. And focusing on those goals is going to make you feel good. But, you know, make sure you're keeping a lot of communication going because that's going to be the key of how you get that thing that doesn't belong there moved. You're not going to do it on your own. You're going to need others. On the 12th, you have the waning gibbous moon in Capricorn, trine Uranus in Taurus. So vexing topics will be solved by innovative or unconventional solutions. So shop around for that custom tailor a solution it might be out there and it might be just the ticket that gets you what you need let's jump into the tarot Aries March 5th through the 12th Aries April 5th through the 12th I'm sorry Aries April 5th through the 12th Aries, April 5th through the 12th. 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 Aries. Too many cards. That is like a symphony. Aries, April 5th through the 12th. Okay. All right. Now, I will clarify all these cards, but before I do, past, present, near future, someone to you, you to the someone, balance, outcome, summary. Okay. This is a general reading. Take what resonates and leave the rest. There is no gender in tarot. You are walking up to someone and talking, or someone is walking up to you and talking, and this whole reading is a conversation between you and another person. Okay? 
Um, also, relationship in this thing is defined as, uh, in this space, I should say, is defined as a continued interaction between any two people. You need to figure out who uh, these cards are representing in your life, and then that is the relationship we're talking about. I'm not trying to define the relationship for you. In your past here, you were interacting with a cancer that high priestess energy or you had to use your intuition about whoever you were interacting with we'll clarify to find out for sure nine of cups it had to do with one's own happiness again with the cancer energy here with the chariot you made it might have needed to take a trip maybe you needed to go on vacation maybe you just needed to make a move maybe you moved houses there's a bought a new car something of that nature there's some sort of forward motion happening here in your interactions with this person okay Four of Swords in your present moment. That is taking a break. Maybe literally going on a, on a trip or a vacation. Um, it could just be taking a rest in and of itself. I will uh, clarify to get more answers. I would say also look up the angel number 44 because they're back to back there. And you have the four and ten ten. You have 10, 10 here. You have the four of cups that is either missing an opportunity or just deciding to decline an opportunity. You could just be like, no, thank you. I still got some of that last glass that you gave me on my foot right there. I don't need more of whatever this is. Or you could uh, have just not been paying attention and missed an opportunity. Queen of Swords, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Libra, also card of Virgo. You can be interacting with anybody in any of those signs. Um, heavy Cancer, though, in this. But this person is being very contemplative. I'll get some more clarification on what's going on. You might need to make a head over heart decision. Scorpio energy there in the someone to you uh, arena. It is uh, also death and rebirth. It could be somebody wanting to change something up about a relationship, but we're going to have to clarify to find out for sure. Ten of Wands. Walking away from burdens that aren't even yours. Not taking them on. You're not, you're not giving in to more commitment. Uh, balance here is found in a higher level of commitment. Three of Pentacles, this could be work, this could be home. It could be either one, it could be marriage, it doesn't have to be. It's, it's like a commitment of some kind to a community. It doesn't matter what kind of commitment it is. Uh, seven of Cups and your outcome. So you're looking at options, Page of Swords, because you found out something. Ten of Swords, feel some sort of feeling of betrayal. You found out something, something here that wasn't okay that Ten of Swords within this relationship, Two of Cups, possibly with a Cancer, because that is Cancer energy. Let's get you some clarification. What is this High Priestess card about in Aries past? Sudden Wealth, so something happened very quickly. What is this High Priestess in Aries past? Two of Swords, what's this High Priestess in Aries past? Two of Wands, what's this High Priestess in Aries past? Two of Cups. So these two piles are going to be interrelated. You are dealing with them in your past. You're dealing with them in your future. Unsurprising as we build our futures one present moment at a time. And your past is just a previous present moment. Two of Swords. Minor Arcana Justice card. Libra energy. Cancer energy here with the Two of Cups. So interesting. Two of Wands. Standing at this crossroads, not really quite sure what to do with this relationship because something suddenly changed there. And you're needing to use your intuition about this sudden difference. What is this Nine of Cups? Maybe somebody was silent for a while and now they're talking. Judication. That feels like Scorpio energy to me. What is this, like the Judgment card? What is the Nine of Cups here? In Aries past, what is that? Four of Cups. What's this Nine of Cups in Aries past? Queen of Swords, Empress. Okay. Uh, Queen of Swords, again, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Libra, also card of Virgo. Empress card, Libra energy, Taurus energy, heavy Libra energy here. Empress. It's also mother energy. It could be a mother or it could be about a mother. There was some sort of missed opportunity here between you and potentially an air sign. Or a Virgo. And there was, because there was a choice made. Somebody said no thank you to something. Somebody was making some sort of offer with happiness here. And someone said no thanks. And then there was this need to like, 
make a head over heart decision, bring somebody involved, maybe involve another person. What is this chariot energy here? Thoughts, so racing thoughts potentially. What is this chariot energy here? Because I mean, there was a little bit of that, I felt that. Four of Pentacles, Ace of Cups. What's this chariot energy? Justice card, again, with the Libra energy. I find that interesting, because your Aries and Libra is your six months apart. Right, chariot energy, this, you racing forward, racing thoughts there, four of pentacles, holding on to those thoughts, right? Well, wanting to race forward, there's like, you know, to make an offer of some kind. Again, justice card, Libra energy, contracts, documents, wanting to move something to an official step or something like that. Wanting to make something official, maybe even with some contracts and documents. What is this Four of Swords in Aries present moment? False person. Mm, take it a break because something feels inauthentic. What is this Four of Swords? Your spidey senses are going there, Aries. What is this Four of Swords? Ace of Swords. What's this Four of Swords? Full card, Aries energy. Look up 88, 8 of cups, 8 there at the top. Hmm. Walking away, 4 of swords, 8 of, eight of cups. Walking away because you had a realization about this person. Aries energy, they were the fool, it's your energy. You're taking a leap of faith off somewhere else. Because there's something about this person that you don't trust, you don't like. You're like, no, I don't like this. What is this Four of Cups? What is this Four of Cups? House. Missed an opportunity for stability, potentially. What is this Four of Cups? Gave up an opportunity so you'd be more stable. World card. What is this Four of Cups? Devil, King of Cups. Interesting. Capricorn energy there. The Devil card. King of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Heavy in the Scorpio, also card of Libra. Heavy Libra energy in this reading. Travel there, the world card. Also bringing something to a completion. Uh, King of Cups is, is a emotionally mature, emotionally balanced. Needing to be emotionally balanced in the face of toxicity. Needing to be stable. Like if somebody's coming at you with some kind of toxicity, just saying no thank you, right? C continuing to be emotionally stable even when other people are being irrational. What is this Queen of Swords pathway? Maybe going off on a journey with an air sign. What is this Queen of Swords? High Priestess, this Cancer Energy. What's this Queen of Swords? Ten of Pentacles, what's this Queen of Swords? death card. So this person, right? We're going to find out more information about who they are up there. Scorpio energy with that death card. Again, Queen of Swords, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, right? Heavy in the Libra, also a card of Virgo. Frequently reminds me of a Taurus, I have to say, but it, it's that uh, Venus energy, with the Libra. Pathway. Motion detected at front door. Well, there you go. Pathway. That's, that's a, a path moving forward um, going on right there. I'm sorry, hold on. Sorry. There we go. Sorry. Somebody was trying to ring through and then, you know, I'm not going to talk to you right now. Pathway. Uh, you're trying to find this path forward. Right? With these butterflies. It's tra very transformative. Right? You're trying to use that intuition with that high priestess, this cancer energy. This person is in your community. Could be a Scorpio. Doesn't have to be, though. They're going to come communicate with you, whoever this air sign is for you. And you're just needing to use your intuition. I'm going to talk to you about a journey, about a path, about like where something is headed. What's this uh, death card about in Aries' future? Privileged lady. What's this death card about in Aries' future? Knight of Cups. What's this death card about in Aries' future? Knight of Pentacles, the Hierophant. Okay. 
Higher fun is Taurus energy. Knight of Pentacles, any earth sign. Um, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Heavy on the Virgo, also a card of Leo. Knight of Cups, any water sign. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Heavy on the Pisces, also a card of Aquarius. Scorpio energy there with the death card. So this person is wanting some sort of commitment here. They're going to come forward. Um, I mean, there's a variety of signs going on here, but they they want a commitment. They want a higher level of commitment, and potentially with you if you, you know, see yourself as the privileged lady. If not, you might see this person as the privileged lady. They want some sort of consistency, some sort of commitment, some sort of pattern or something. Knight of Pentacles. And they're willing to move, slowly move towards it, but they are moving towards it. What is this Ten of Wands? What is this Ten of Wands? Message of concern. Okay. What is this Ten of Wands? There's something in their message that doesn't seem right to you. Ten of Swords. What is this Ten of Wands? Yeah. You have Ten of Swords in the outcome there because you found out something. There's going to be something on how they word things that isn't right. It's definitely going to be the way they word it. Message of concern there. Ten of Wands, Ten of Swords. Right? Again, with that 10-10 energy. Something in this uh, message that you were waiting for, right? And in the message, it's going to be something in the wording that you feel like there's an unequal give and take happening. See how this person, he's holding a scales of justice in his hands, but he's not blind, right? It's not equal. This person's getting three. This person's getting two. He's keeping one. He's weighed and measured them and found that person more worthy, right? So it's not equal give and take here. You've been being patient and waiting, right? And this message finally came in. You were waiting for this message so you could set down burdens. This message came in, and there's something in the wording of the message that makes you go all stop. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. I'm not doing that. What is this three of pentacles? Despair. Yeah. What is this three of pentacles? Strength card, Knight of Swords. What's this Three of Pentacles? Judgment. Yeah, there's a choice. This is a definite choice being made. Scorpio energy. Scorpio energy up there. Scorpio energy down here. Knight of Swords. Any air sign. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Heavy on the Gemini. Also a card of Taurus. Leo energy there with the Strength card. This person who wanted this, this higher level of commitment. It's going to be this person here. Right, with that hierophant card that Taurus kind of that Taurus energy which is, is Taurus energy as well but it doesn't much feel like a Taurus this person who wanted this higher level of commitment has to be strong now because they were ready to come racing in towards you like ready to choose either they've been missing you so they're in despair or your response to the hey you want to get together it being you know whether that no matter what kind of get together is that it's like, even if it's just to hang out because it's your friend, you don't want anything to do with this person. There's something in there, the way they worded something that makes you just go, no. And they were not prepared for you to say, no, thank you. So they are in a state of sadness. What is this Seven of Cups about? What is this Seven of Cups about? Journey. Okay, so an option to travel. What is this Seven of Cups about? You're looking at moving on here. Page of Pentacles, Three of Swords, yeah. What is this Seven of Cups about? Page of Cups. Three of Swords, it's any outside interference. It absolutely could be cheating. It doesn't have to be. You could feel that way with this toxicity, this Ten of Swords. It might feel like that you were being betrayed by this person. And that could totally be any kind of heartache or despair happening there. It could be and like it could be like the boss was a jerk or the car broke down or the kids are sick and you know things outside of the relationship causing an argument that wouldn't ordinarily be there is the three of swords. Okay, so communication coming in, possibly an apology, possibly an offer because the you know they're sad and they didn't expect you to tell them no. Like they're still looking at options, you're looking at options. They want to they want this to move forward. They're like, oh, but baby. That's what the page, because it's page, it's not nights, it's not real, it's just words. 
So it's like a baby. And there's, here we go with the Page of Swords down here. It's like an immature energy. What's this Page of Swords? Eight of Swords. You're up in your head about this information you found out about this person. What's this Page of Swords? Four of Wands. What's this Page of Swords? Page of Wands. What's this Page of Swords? Yeah, this is, you get all the kids here. You really do. Page of Cups, Page of Pentacles here. Page of Swords, Page of Wands. They might come in a little bit with the, you know, oh baby, oh baby, with that Page of Wands kind of thing. But baby, I can't get you out of my head, baby. Like that kind of energy. Uh, four of Wands. So definitely talking about this relationship. Wheel of Fortune. That's the divine timing being at play. That's basically, you can't do anything about this. It's kind of the pace. Of, it was meant to happen this way. The divine is involved. Ten of Swords. This ending was predetermined. What is this uh, Ten of Swords in Aries summary? Ten of Swords there. Official person. That's like getting the Emperor energy. That's you. What is this Ten of Swords? Whatever this is, you're putting a stop to it. Nine of Swords. Whatever this is. Ten of Swords. What's this Ten of Swords? Hangman. What's this Ten of Swords? Five of Pentacles. Yeah, you're you're getting a bigger perspective here on the Sangman energy, right? And it's you're getting the bigger perspective. And there was something you were worried about here, something that was leaving you left out in the cold, something where you're like, the, the full realization of this did not hit you before. And it will. It won't. This Three of Swords energy, this looking at options, these communications that are coming in, like the, let this person talk. Let them run their mouth. Just do a lot of observation. The snake will reveal itself. If this person is untrustworthy, you will see it. You will. You will get this higher perspective. The more they run their mouth, they're going to show you their immaturity. Okay? And you're going to get a higher perspective about whatever it is you were worried about here. And that five of, of pentacles feeling left out in the cold. You're going to put a stop to that. You're going to be like, no, I don't think so. What is this Two of Cups in Aries Summary? Three of Pentacles. Yeah. What is this Two of Cups in Aries Summary? The Sun. What is this Two of Cups in Aries Summary? Three of Cups. What is this Two of Cups in Aries Summary? Ace of Wands. Yeah. This person, whoever they are, Right. They're coming in, looking at the relationship, offering a commitment. Could be a Leo, but doesn't have to be. Offering some sort of reconciliations, ace of wands, passionate new beginning, some sort of illumination. Or there's just something in general about this relationship that's going to become very clear to you. You know, when you get that hangman energy with the sun card, right? Something's going to be illuminated for you about the commitment about the reconciliation, about the offer, about the passion that will totally make sense to you at that time. You're going to completely understand what you weren't seeing before about this person. Right? There was something about them that was off. And you felt it, but you weren't really sure. So you were giving them like the benefit of the doubt. And you're going to discover why you shouldn't have been. Advice for Aries, April 5th through the 12th. Empress, advice for Aries, April 5th through the 12th. Queen of Cups, Justice. Okay, that is Taurus, Libra, Energy. Queen of Cups is any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Having on the Cancer, also a card of Gemini. Justice, it's a Libra energy. It's also a card of Balance. Something with a mother or mother figure, maybe your motherly instincts, could be something of that nature. Could also be you're interacting with a Taurus or a Libra. And there's a need to be using one's intuition being in that divine feminine energy is what it really feels like to me so much more than the signs. You need to be trusting in that divine, inner divine feminine energy. You know, use that with your intuition to figure out where the balance needs to be brought into, into your life, into this relationship. To figure out if balance can be brought into this relationship. Okay? If you have a yes or no question you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. Message for Aries. 
within the next few weeks. Message for Aries. Unlikely. Message for Aries. Let go. Okay. Let them talk. Don't stop them. Let them run their mouth. Advice for Aries, April 5th through the 12th. Expect powerful change, new moon eclipse. Advice for Aries, April 5th through the 12th. Meditate and contemplate, new moon in Pisces. Advice for Aries, April 5th through the 12th. Nothing is yet set in stone, mutable moon. But you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. Adjustments are required, third quarter moon. Don't let your past hold you back, south node. Emotions are running high, super moon. What do you need to release? Waiting moon. Message for Aries. Everywhere fairies. We are the everywhere fairies of the city streets, ensuring daisies crack pavements. We are the, ev the we, are, we are the fairies of the forest, guarding the groves. We are ever surprising, always defying definition, just like you, human child. Well, I hope that helps, Aries, because it is what I have for you. And just remember, as you go about the world this week, that you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. And you have a right to be here.